Thank you, Rav Claudia. Shana Tova. Mituka, everybody. There are many words to describe today's Torah reading. Complex, disturbing, enlightening. After Sarah gives birth to her own biological son, Yitzchak, with Abraham, Sarah grows jealous of their maidservant Hagar and Ishmael, the son Hagar conceived with Abraham. Fearful of the ways in which Ishmael is behaving and his possible inheritance of Abraham's legacy, she requests for Abraham to banish both Ishmael and Hagar. We read, Early the next morning, Abraham took some bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He placed them over her shoulder together with the child and sent her away. And she wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was gone from the skin, she cast the child under one of the bushes and she left and sat at a distance for she said to herself, Al yeled, I shall not see the child die. And she sat and she lifted her voice and she cried. Mother and son are banished into the unknown with little resources. And when the water runs out, she cannot possibly bear what is to follow for her child's life. The situation is now in God's hands. She cannot watch the child die. It is hard to not see the similarities with our world right now. We have heard stories of mothers in Afghanistan who literally threw their babies over the airport fence towards troops because they feared the life ahead in their own land. A situation so desperate, it questions what it means to be human and take care of one another. These are stories of incredible courage, courage in life's most unthinkable moments, ones that I hope none of us ever have to face. But Hagar's story is not a history tale. Rather, it comes to teach us a powerful spiritual lesson. Our text continues. And God heard the voice of the child an angel of God cried out to Hagar from the heavens and said to her, What is happening, Hagar? Do not fear, because God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Get up. Lift up the boy and grasp his hand, for I will make a great nation of him. And God opened up her eyes, and she saw the well of water. And she walked to it and filled the skin of water, and she allowed the child to drink. At this moment of intense vulnerability and pain, God hears the child's cries. It said, And God opened up her eyes, and she saw the well of water. It is a life-sustaining well. One Midrash teaches that this is Miriam's well, the same well that kept us alive in the desert for 40 years, and is the same well that gave life to Hagar and Ishmael, those cast aside, those most vulnerable. Sephorno, one of our classic Torah commentators, adds that the well was always there, but that God just gave her the ability to recognize its location. The well, the well was always there, but it was when Hagar was most vulnerable that the water was revealed to her. It is a spiritual tale that teaches us that life-giving nature of God is all around us, but sometimes we're not able to recognize it. It is when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to say, here I am, I don't know what to do, but I'm presenting my full self, that we may notice these wonders. As the globally renowned vulnerability researcher, Dr. Brene Brown writes, vulnerability is the source of hope, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. We read the story of Hagar and Ishmael, not as a literal one, 
but one full of spiritual wisdom. It is when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to say, I don't know that we find meaning in our lives. It is when we place down our fears that our eyes may be open to the life-sustaining well. It is when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to cry out to God that we find meaning in our lives. I bless us, each and every one, those online, those here, that this year is one full of willing vulnerability, one where we choose to be courageous and vulnerable, not because we are forced into that position, but because we know it will lead us to a life of joy, meaning, and connection. So I ask you to pause and think, how will you be vulnerable this year? In honor of this blessing, I invite anybody who wants to display more vulnerability in 5782 to join us for our group Aliyah. And if you're feeling called, please rise in your seat.